were written in the name of the Lord and uh, this week we're talking about the word and I want to share with all of you my thoughts about uh, the subject. I believe that there has been a major process in these uh, 2,000 years when it comes uh, to the way the, the church uh, worship uh, and also practices liturgy and even study and share uh, the Word of God with others. At the beginning, during that uh, apostolic period, uh, services were very simple. Uh, people gathered mostly at homes. Uh, the preaching was based only in the Tanakh or, or the Old Testament as we know it. Uh, also, uh, they include uh, as part of their uh, teaching process uh, the letters sent by the Apostle. So the teaching of the Apostle were uh, crucial uh, at that uh, beginning stage and, and development of the spiritual growth of uh, local congregations during that apostolic period. Uh, during the apostolic period, uh, not just uh, services were informal, uh, but also they gave importance to two major columns in, in the spiritual development of a, in a congregation. And, and first was the learning uh, of the scripture. It was very important that members of local congregations were able to learn the scriptures. And they did that through a very strong uh, discipleship process. Uh, it was a weekly process in which people were discipled in the word of the Lord. And, and the second thing that was important uh, was the fellowship. Fellowship was part, uh, was a central part in the uh, Christian uh, development. That was the reason why on Saturdays they gathered as groups to study the Word of God. And then on Sunday they would have a celebration, a celebration uh, remembering the, re the reason of Jesus Christ, but also a time to sit down at the table, to have uh, not just the Eucharist, but also to have a formal meal, to cheer, to have fellowship one with another. So. During those first uh, 300 years, the church pretty much developed this system that was very effective and the church grew uh, exponentially during that particular time, even that they were suffering periods of persecution. But then, uh, after the third century, then we begin to see changes uh, from informal to more uh, formal. Uh, we begin to see the uh, buildings that originally were pagan uh, temples. Uh, well, the empire make uh, a way to convert those uh, buildings, those pagan temples into Christian churches. Uh, emperors uh, decide uh, to build massive buildings as for instance, uh, the, the church of Hagia Sophia in Constantinople, what it is to the Istanbul. That church was pretty much the largest church building, a church facility uh, for a thousand years until finally the Vatican uh, decided uh, to, to build the uh, St. Peter's Basilica. So pretty much uh, we begin to see all of these major changes and eventually we begin to see fragmentation on the worship style based on the culture of the region and the theology of the church in that particular location. For instance, the Roman church have one style, but then you will see a different uh, liturgy uh, if you compare it with the Greek or the Coptic or the Chaldean or the Russian and, and the rest of the Eastern churches. Um, I just want to, to also mention it that uh, as, uh, mentioned, as uh, Dr. Hancock mentioned it on his video presentation, the impact of Protestant, Protestant theology in worship and uh, the learning and developing of the Christian church is huge. Uh, for instance, so while Spain, Portugal, Italy, and the rest of Southern Europe remain trapped in its religion obscurantism, 
the Protestant expression in Northern Europe made a profound impact to the development of civilization. While in the Roman uh, Catholic uh, countries, people live, we have free access to the scripture. Most of the people in uh, Southern Europe do not develop the, the reading or writing. Uh, they remain mostly uh, agricultural countries. Then we see a different development if you take a look to the Northern Europe area. You will see that it was because of the Protestant uh, nations, uh, people were encouraged to seek the scriptures from an individual standpoint, using native tongues as a vehicle. Then people begin to learn to read and write because in order to read the Bible in your own language, you need to learn how to read. And if you learn to read, you want to write your personal thoughts about what you read. So people also begin to learn how to write. And the ability of learning how to read and write brought them an incredible and exponential growth, uh, an expansion of nation through university system, the printing press, and the actual industrial revolution. So, so it is interesting that while Southern Europe, countries uh, that were under the, uh, oh, they were pretty much loyal to the church in Rome, what the Protestant nations in, began to grow uh, incredibly and they were more prosperous. And we have seen all of that until this very day. I mean, you take a look to Germany, for instance, and Germany is one of the, what it is the most pro powerful nation in the European Union. The same thing, you would take a look at the United Kingdom, uh, which is one of the most powerful countries in, in the world. So that is the result in great part of the impact made by a Protestant uh, theology and Protestant way to encourage people to read the scripture, to think about it, to develop their own theology, to see the Bible speaking not just as a community, but also as individuals. And today we, we see many churches that have retained many uh, or at least certain parts of the worship style from the Middle Ages. Nonetheless, the prevalent uh, worship style is the one that is relevant to this present generation. In the same way, uh, the Word of God does not change, but the methods to preach and teach has changed in order to reach out this present generation. So we need to, to in many ways, to, to return to the apostolic church model and find a relevant way to apply it into our current generation. And the reason is because it is easier to go to your own context, to your local context, and then find a way in which that message become light to the people in a way that they can understand it according to their own culture. So the result of that will be a church with a simple message, a church that cares, a church that gives great importance to fellowship, and a church that is constantly discipling its people in order for all of us to fulfill the Great Commission. Well, that is my thoughts for uh, this week on this segment, and I'm looking forward to read all of your comments uh, during this week. Thank you very much, and may God bless you.